it's Friday. Oh man, I just want to tell you, I appreciate everybody else for tuning in. I know I had a couple of people in the comments. Uh, you guys, as usual, are amazing. I um, just wanted to bring out a note of Matherin um, Notary Business Insight. You know, as always, I try to provide with you guys with great information. Um, I always reach out to somebody that I admire, and I always see that, you know, constantly, constantly providing great services for their community and doing what is required within this business. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Ismail. I am the owner of Matherin Notary Services. I've been a notary since 2017 here in the state of Massachusetts. So um, as usual, you know, tonight's not about me. Tonight's about our special guest. Um, she is about to share as far as her journey, uh, her business information, and what it is that she's providing and how you can elevate your business as a notary. And if I further ado, look, I'm, I'm going to keep it short because I know I usually have. <laughs> but tonight, special guest is Mr. Sophia Martin, owner of Martin Notary Services in Philly. So I just want to give you the flow right now for you to introduce yourself to everyone. Yes, and thank you for having me. And easy mistakes. My, so it's actually pronounced Sophia. So it's Sophia. Sophia. And yes, <laughs> yes. My mom, she's like, nope, I named you Sophia. You need to tell people. I'm like, all right. My name oh, is Sophia. <laughs> I love, I love. That, hey, that is amazing. That's amazing. You know what? I, again, I do appreciate you being the, taking the time out tonight, you know, to joining. I've been following you for quite some time now. I remember the first time I came across your profile, it was from a, a notar notary in Texas. She was reaching out to me, asking me some questions. I guess she wanted to get inside the business and then um, she made a post. She made a post saying, you know, she was thinking who had been helping her the past few weeks. Then she tagged me and then she tagged you. I was like, wait, did she like tag the wrong page? Like, who is this Martin Notary? So that's how I came across your page. And I've been a fan since. I, um, I see everything that you are doing down there in Philly. And you are, like I said, you're constantly educating the people. You are constantly finding new ways to elevate your business and the services that you are providing within your community. And one thing that I also like is the fact that um, you're always promoting Black-owned businesses. You know, that is extremely, extremely important. Um, and I feel like that is, you know, one of the things that can help us elevate our business is by working with others. So um, for, for tonight, I just wanted to just, if you don't mind telling everybody like how you got started, you know, why you choose a notary industry out of every other business you could have chosen, you end up with the notary industry. Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, as cliche, cliche, excuse me, as it sounds, um, and forgive me guys, if my thoughts are jumbled. Today was crazy. I had like six signings, the most craziest signings ever. So my thoughts are all over. But um, COVID, COVID came. Um, I had plans of pursuing medical school. That was my original goal because I graduated actually in 2017. Um, when COVID came, it kind of delayed the entire process. So I was like, okay, well, I have to find something else to do in the meantime. And then I stumbled upon, I'm not even going to name drop. I don't know who was the first notary I found, but I just know I kind of went on a rabbit hole on YouTube of side hustles and business. And then the whole notary industry came up and literally just continued to do my research. I bought a course um, and just executed everything in the course. And here we are. Nice, nice. So, so you pretty much, it's, it's crazy how, you know, you, your plan was for something else. And then because, you know, life happened, as we all know, how, you know, how everyone was impacted by COVID. And instead of letting that, you know, um, stop you, you find a way for you to make turn the negative to a positive, which is extremely amazing because a lot of businesses went out of business during COVID. And here you are, you find you find ways to create a business and opportunities for yourself. Right. So, you know, so that kind of plays into, you know, having the right mindset and the importance of having the right mindset and i feel like you definitely had the right mindset for you to have started your notary business so um what part as far as why is it important for most people for people to have the um right mindset because like i said a lot of people lost their businesses and you find a way to create a business right absolutely so um why, the importance of your mindset. So I think, um, and I'm going to try and relate everything back to the notary business. So the thing is, I think um, it, we can relate it to anything, right? 
it's it, at the end of the day, it's a business, right? And I think we get so caught up in like the oh, the notary and the loan signings and like just the glitz and the glam of everything, but there's so much more that goes into just being a business owner, period, from taxes to making sure everything is organized to wearing multiple different hats, especially when you're first getting started. So I found that, you know, just having a, the the right people around you, putting the right things in your ear every single day, whether it's podcasts, whether it's talking to other people, um, it just it just takes you so much further because they're like. I, honestly, and this could be just my opinion, there are more, I'm not going to say bad days, but there are more frustrating days than good days. And it the easiest thing is always going to be able to qu- um, quit, right? Yes. So just build in that and even when I first started like I'll never forget it was it was never even really just oh I wanted I never knew Martin's Notary Services was going to be what it is at all it was supposed to be a side hustle um, so that I continued so that I could continue to have money to keep investing Um, but once I you know you listen to podcasts and just talking to different people and seeing that other people have done what it is that I'm trying to do that's just kind of what builds a good backbone very important that, that that is amazing, and then I I I, I had someone here, um, Q. He said if you if it wasn't for you, she would have never came across me. Oh, oh Griffin, you. you know it's <laughs> so it, it's amazing. It's amazing how it, you know it all is turned back around because I came across you from another notary, and he came right. across me is because of you. And you know, and like we 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 are thankful. We all is grateful for those around us and the other businesses that providing services in the area. And you know it's 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 amazing how you carry yourself. Like like I said, I've watched plenty of your videos, and you say you're from the south. You see, um, where are you from in the south? Because I am I'm from, from Florida. I'm from Georgia. Oh, you're from Georgia. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So from Georgia to Philly, uh, huge change, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. And I love it here. I mean, I came here to play basketball. So that's kind of why like, I got a scholarship here to play basketball. And then I just fell in love with the city. Um, and I just stayed. And I even moved. I moved to Florida for a year after I gra- well, I did school and then I graduated. And I lived in Florida for a year, but it's too hot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and trust me, I, I get it. I get it. I, I, I grew up there. Now I'm in Massachusetts. I'm dealing with the cold. You know, I'm pl- I'm planning to head back down south at some point. You know, that's you know that's definitely in the work. So, it, you know, it, it is amazing. So I wanted to kind of like bring you on because you are extremely diverse. Even though I know you say you started your business, and um, you know during the pandemic, but the the level like the knowledge that you have and how you are providing services to your community is exceptional, and I appreciate and I admire that. And anytime I see another black one business out there doing great work, I always want to give credit when credit is due. And I wanted to speak to you as far as as far as how can notaries elevate their business, you know, even during the pandemic. So we can use the pandemic as a perfect example. You know, how can you provide services that is going to last or how can you make yourself um, different from everything else that's around you? Right. Absolutely. Um, so the main thing is, it's really simple. Honestly, it's really just about just doing good work. Right. I mean, you're, we're human. You have to understand that we, we are going to make mistakes. I still make mistakes. I, the, yesterday, I, um, uh, what did I do yesterday? I think I forgot, to, I forgot to print out the closing disclosure and I, cause that, cause you know how sometimes they send you multiple different things yeah. and I had so much going on. I forgot to print out the CD. So I had to, I drove all the way there with no CD. I had to figure that situation out and then figure it out. But I, I don't know. I think it's more so just re, just being understandable. And my slogan um, is the, the notary with Southern hospitality. And I live and breathe by that, right? You, you have to treat people, um, whether it's the title company you're working with, whether it's the clientele, it doesn't matter what's going on. I think how you present yourself, first impressions are big. Yes. Um, you, you can talk all you want on Instagram, you can make all the posts in the world, you can do everything in the world on social media, but all that matters is when you ever you're in front of the owner of the title company or the actual client or whatever service it is that you're providing, you have to show up, you have to show out, you have to go out of your way to provide exceptional service. Um, I feel as though every time you leave an appointment or the closing table, um, you know, when they tell you like, wow, that was that was painless, I think that's that's very, very important. But it all just kind of stems from just imagining what service you would want um, and then just giving that, but 
be, I don't know, just going above and beyond and also being understanding, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic. You got to understand that a lot of people are refinancing out of stress, right? A lot of people are refinancing because they need the cash now because they don't have any money. So it's just, I don't know, just finding ways to be to be personable. That's yes. part of it. And then the other component um, I tell people all the time is you you just can't, being being basic if you're basic you're gonna have a basic business period like there's no way around it like if you if you're okay with just being a loan signing agent cool but if you want to be the best loan signing agent or if you want to be the best in whatever it is that your niche is you have to go out of your way to learn the industry and to research the industry right so with me once i learned the documents I started to learn the market and that's how I became a real estate investor because it's like, okay, you plateau here with just the documents, but there's always so much more that you can know. And the conversations that you're able to have once you, you know, like I'm on Zillow every day now, who would have thought? You know? <laughs> Same <So now>, here. <laughs> oh, seriously. So it's like, you have to, if you, if you want, you can't, uh, again, people say on Insta post all day on in social media and everything, and I want this and I want that. But outside of that, what are you doing? Are you reading articles? Are you following other real estate pages in your area? Are you doing your homework? Are you doing your research? Or is it just you saying what you want, but you're not putting any action behind it? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as, as we all are stressed, you know, doing your research and taking the time to invest in yourself and your business is absolutely that's necessary because your business the success that you are trying to accomplish, you you will not get there unless you you like you take the time and invest in yourself. And a lot of people feel like you know they can just come into business. They're trying to earn the you know the ten thousand dollar a month um, you know mark. Which look, I'm not saying it's impossible, but you have to be willing to put in the work. And most people don't understand that this is there's different cycles within this business as well, not just within the real estate. And if you just in here for the money. The months that you're not making your quota, most most of them are going to quit. So it's um, and I stress the fact that important to know as far as learning the cycles, knowing exactly what it is that you are trying to accomplish in this business. Because look, it's not as simple as it may seem. It's not for everyone. It's no, not it's like not. <laughs> it's not. And and that's what I wish. Um, I, I, that's what I wish, um, that were, and that's why I haven't really even created a course yet. I probably won't ever, but that's something that I think that more people need to stress when they are teaching about the field is, is the cycles of real estate, right? Because I was victim to the whole 10,000 a month. You see all the videos with the captions. Oh, I made this and I made <laughs> that. Not understanding that we are at a record low of interest rates in years. You know what I'm saying? And not understanding that this is not going to last forever because of this reason and that reason. And then like you're saying, coming in, oh, $10,000 a month. Also knowing that $10,000 a month, that's not a walk in the park. When I, the, the first month that I was able to obtain that goal, I was tired. <laughs> the end of the month, I was pooped. And, my, and that's when I became a real estate investor because I'm like, I'm not going to keep doing this every month, right? I, there yeah. has to be another way that I can, even if I take $5,000 and flip it into 10K, you know, years from now passively, that is what I would rather do. So I think it's important of understanding, not of not just seeing the dollar signs because there's always a gimmick. We have to understand that there's always a gimmick. You have to go outside of yourself and do your research and understand, are you going to be wi willing to go with the downturns because it's slowed down the market has changed tremendously right yes. and you had to alter your business accordingly to be able to sustain yourself definitely yeah you you're absolutely right so you know that's why you know we try to i try to educate people especially the new notaries that's coming in the game and you know they came in because of the pandemic and you know we try to tell them look it's not going to last it's not going to last make sure that you're constantly finding ways to improve your business and also look into other services like what 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 can your community benefit from like what services that are needed that is not being offered or even what services that are being offered but it's not being offered properly and you know not in a professional manner and you know it's always it's always important for us to constantly be doing our researches and and another thing I like how you mentioned real estate because technically what we were doing as loan signing agent correlates with the real estate investment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. really quickly, you put an H, it's Martin's Notary Services, not Martin's. Notary. Oh my God. Look, I am tripping. <laughs> all, good, all good. But 
to piggyback off of what you just said, I, and that, that's something I live by, which helped me get my first property. I was like, I need to be on the other side of the closing table because yeah. if you're taking advantage of the situations in front of you and you meet these investors who they don't they don't have jobs. These people are just living their best life because they've able to obtain financial freedom through real estate. And we've been a, we're, we're assisting them as they do it. So the fact that we see all this, you see the different products that's being offered. You see the multiple different opportunities, their lifestyle, that is definitely a motivating factor in my opinion. Uh, yeah, makes sense. So so prior to you jumping into the real estate investing world, uh, what services were you providing as a notary besides loan signing? Just loan signings and general notary work. Mm, okay, yeah. And, and a lot of people, they do not want to do general notary I work. I don't know why. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. I'll take general notary work over loan signings any day. No, really. What's uh, like? What would you recommend as far as you know, especially doing the, for general notary work? There's a specific niche. Everybody has their own niche. Like, what's working for you down in Philly? Because I know, like, every state is different. Every area is different. So, what has what had the most impact on your business based on the general notary aspect? Um, I don't really, and I, you know, I don't really have a niche. I don't, I don't do apostilles because I, I haven't been training that I'm, i don't do that i don't do wedding officiating i don't that's not really general notary work but everything else i do right so i i do literally everything else but i don't care if you if you just got a divorce if you need a will done a power of attorney i do just about everything literally <laughs> everything. that is amazing that's amazing so um would you would you recommend for notaries to right well, i can't say because not everyone will want to but would you recommend notaries that are capable and are willing to uh, invest in themselves to you know eventually look into being a real estate investor like what do you do in, in the real estate world are, are you wholesaling flipping right right so i when it comes to recommendations i tell people to do what's based on your financial situation because everybody's financial situation is different. Everybody's lifestyle is different. Like I don't have kids. I'm not married. I don't have obligations. So I'm able to take more risk. I don't have yeah. much, you know what I'm saying? So I can risk it a little bit more as opposed to other people who may have to play it safe. The next thing I would say is, of course, do your research, but like seriously do your research because there's multiple ways to get started into real estate investing. But the nugget that I've learned from just going to networking events out here in Philadelphia is every investor I've met, their long term goal is to buy and hold. So the quicker you can get to your your goal of buying and holding, the better it's going to be, because that's how you'll be able to achieve passive income. Wholesaling is nothing but a business. Wholesaling at the end of the day, once the deal is done, the deal is done. You got your check. What are you going to do with the money? You're not it doesn't guarantee you're going to make any more money. Right. Even my, so my brother wholesales, but he's slowly transitioning to buy and hold as well, because eventually you're just going to be getting rental income and you won't necessarily have to wholesale if you don't want. So what I, I tell people is if you are into loan signings, especially because honestly, if you're doing loan signings, there's no reason why you shouldn't be interested in real estate investing, especially when you we see the numbers, you see what these yeah. people are making, <laughs> we it, right? We have to yeah. explain it. You see everything. You that is the best time to network. Every everybody who's helped me get to where I am, I've met through my notary business. From the title comp, my favorite title company, the Black uh, Quick Abstract. I will always um shout them shout them out, Keisha White. She handles all of my transactions to I found my architect, my contractor. And some, wow. people, some of these people came from my Google business page. Some people came from me doing closings from them. Some people came from um, referring through the notary business. So it's, it's so, so, so imperative to just literally take advantage of every single situation in front of you because you never know who you're going to meet at no, all. <laughs> you you're absolutely right because I I can recall I've done some signing for some multi millionaires in this area and I had no idea like you know just driving to their house you know it's middle of nowhere they are completely away from the city and then yeah. then you get to then you get you get there you was like this is a whole mansion <laughs> you know it's it's it, it's it's amazing looks like so somebody's asking what's what's the best investment if you had ten thousand dollars. Um, so it depends that so um and also the okay, that's a tough question. Sorry, I'm studying. <laughs> I, would, I, I would recommend, recommend, recommend. I have a YouTube channel as well. I made I've made so many videos on this because there's multiple things you can do with ten thousand dollars. This also depends, like I said, on your lifestyle and how much 
how active you want to be involved in your project, right? Because you could take that $10,000 and just buy a piece of land, sit on it and sell it in 10 years, right? Because that's, that's definitely a play as well. That way you're hands off, you only pay your taxes, you take care of the lawn and you go about your business. Now you can also take that $10,000 and, you know, come with your family and your friends, put it together and invest in a property, right? You can work with the developer to work on a different project. And that's why I go back to doing your research. Um, I, have, I, I don't know the title of this video, um, it's probably like four videos ago, but I literally go through every single possibility, possible way to invest in real estate. So see your options, weigh your pros and cons, and then go about your business. Because it's never like, I don't think you're, I don't, I don't, I don't know where you would find land for 10,000, maybe like in the middle of nowhere, but in today's society, yeah. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't tell you to go buy a random piece of land because if it's the middle of nowhere and maybe there's no future plans for development, it may be a waste of money as well. So exactly. I would look at all your different options and then just use that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as far as uh, as far as a lot, I know right now, based on the market that I'm in, I'm in the North Carolina market. Um, you you probably could get a, a lot for maybe 10K, you know, because I don't... I, recently got some for less than 10K because I was cold calling. So that's one of the method that okay. I use. And the guy would just, he's an older guy. He was, you know, he didn't, he didn't want anything to do with it. So and for, and so that's how I was able to pick that. So definitely do your research, find the area that you want to invest in and, you know, just reach out, you know, network within your area. If you want to look for out of state, do your market research for out of state as well. And you may get the ten thousand um, dollar land, but it may not be in an area just like she mentioned. It may not be in an area that you desire. Right. So um, do your research, um, and you know, and just take it as that. So now that you're into the real estate investing world, are you are you providing order notaries with businesses? Like, so if you have a closing that you have to do, so how are you handling that? Like, are you able to network to outsource some work now? Uh, yes. And, you know, and so the thing is, though, I mean, technically, I could still do it. I still do take closings because I genuinely do like what I do. Um, But now that gas is high and everything is super high, <laughs> it doesn't make sense anymore. So my business is actually pretty much automated for the most part. Um, I have my own little kind of thing going on and it works out perfectly. But the thing is, most of my closings are direct now. So, of course, I'm the one that kind of shows up because most of the time I go to the actual title company or the realtor's office. Um, but yes, and that's something else I do recommend. Once you get your business, um, to, like once you form certain relationships, now I'm not talking about with signing services. I'm talking about with actual title companies and the, whoever's in charge, the owners. Yes. Once gotcha. you, even law offices, that's another thing people sleep on, um, private, public, whatever the case may be. Once you've established that relationship and they trust you and you've done so much work, not so much, but you've done a good amount of work for them that you've built that relationship, outsource. Cause it, cause you can make, you can make double. You can, you, you can use that time to market. You can use that time to explore other business ventures. There's so much, so much you can do with it. Okay. And, and, um, what are some ways can people market to, cause the attorney, cause there's a lot of people that don't know, they flat out don't know how to market, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go in there. Um, maybe they're not dressed appropriately or they'll send an email. They're not checking for misspelled words or anything like that. So like, how do you effectively market to local attorneys in your area? Right. Um, so, okay. So number one, if you, you should be dressed properly, right? I tell you, like, you should be dressed like you're going to a signing appointment. So if yep. you're not dressed properly, you're not taking your business serious. We all know that you can't walk in somewhere, you know, unless you're comfortable, comfortable, like you shouldn't be walking anywhere with jeans and just all over the place. You should be definitely well kept. Um, but I tell people that there's, I tell people try everything, I, but also you have to put yourself in their shoes, right? So yeah. when, I, when I first got in, everybody says, oh, walk into the title company. Well, once I really learned the business and I got close with Keisha and I understood how it works, they're busy. They don't have time to talk to you. They're they're not they're literally going to it may it works for some people. But yes. the, the majority of times title companies is filled with a lot of paper. The phone is ringing all the time. They may not have the most time to actually communicate with you. So what has worked for me is finding ways to speak with the right people outside of the office. And that is through networking events. That is through finding ways to get in with get around the right people. That is the best way to do it, honestly. Um, now, if you're not comfortable doing that, I completely understand 
that's when I go back to old fashioned marketing, literally just yeah. walking in, introducing yourself and going about your business. But I also but I, I recommend I, I don't know. Networking is what worked for me. Like I literally found Facebook groups um, of things going on in my area. I attended them. I connect with people on social media. I always support their businesses. I repost yeah. everything. I, I become engaged with what they have going on. You got to understand you can't just imagine if somebody just comes up to you and wants to just take, 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 take. <laughs> yeah. That's how they feel. So yeah. you have to go in and somehow be able to provide value. And that's the other thing. Like quick abstract. That is, I, just, I don't care. I'll say it. that is my favorite title company because, of course, it's black owned. But even down to, you know, now that even in my community of circle that I know outside of my business, people always have questions. Oh, my dad just left me a house. How can I get this taken care of? I'm sending them the quick abstract. Somebody yeah. may ask me, oh, I need this. I'm sending them the quick abstract. So now it's like I'm providing, I'm giving, I'm giving business as well. So I'm not just taking, 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 but I'm also sh- pushing light to um in that area as well and that costs no money that costs no money and you don't even have to leave your house for it so it's just oh, it's out of the box <laughs> uh, you're, you, you're absolutely right i think along the line a, a lot of people forget that the value has to be provided on both sides and, that, and everyone everyone just stands so you know what they rather have somebody giving to them Look, I do the same thing as far as, you know, I've been going out, especially especially during the summertime. I'm out at a community event with my kids. I have my shirt on. People are asking me questions. You know, I'm giving out my cards. And, you know, any local businesses I see that share posts, I'm sharing it, tagging them. And that, you know, that actually helps. You know, I've gotten business like that. Um, just, you know, I'll have it at the owner or the supervisor that they'll reach out to me and ask me if I can notarize certain documents for them. And given the fact that I am mobile, like I'm fully mobile with within an office in the back of the car, they usually use me um, like throughout the weekends because most of the staff, if they have an audio on staff, staff not gonna want to go out, notarize right. document at no nursing home or, right. <laughs> or at the hospital. So that's where I comes in at, I'm providing them value. I'm making recommendation to them as well. And I, you know, I'll leave them a review. Like people love reviews. I like love I go on their Google page and leave a review. And that's another so- thing is visibility. Like I, I, I my, my number is seven, but without being annoying, you have to find ways to consistently stay in front of your target audience's face because people will forget about you. Competition is high. We have yeah. YouTube now. Everybody named Mom is trying to get into the notary business. So <laughs> you're doing what everybody else is doing. Nine times out of ten, you may not get the most success because nothing you're doing is going to stand out. So you have to find ways to market yourself without, I don't want to say being annoying, but without being, you know, too annoying, but still being professional at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. So um, so what, what advice do you have for any new notaries that's coming in the game? right now and if somebody were to reach out to you they ask you hey you know i want to become a notary i've been watching your youtube channel and i feel like that's something that i can do like what advice would you give them if they were coming into the notary business yes um to number one save your money (laughs) the moment you start making money i have to say this because i i oh lord save your please save your money and so that you and reinvest back into your business. All the other materialistic things can wait. Uh, but more so just, uh, I don't know. There's so much I can say. We're setting real, setting realistic goals um, because I think, we, like I said, we get so consumed into the thumb, the crazy thumbnails we see. Like I, I've never said, oh, this is how you can make $10,000 a month. And I yeah. never will say that because I, I cannot guarantee anybody. Everybody's market is different. Exactly. Um, piggybacking on that you have to learn your market right philly is um very big the reason why we thrive here i believe is because philly is very very in, um heavy on real estate investors so we have we have a lot of wholesale we have a lot of wholesalers we have a lot of fix and flippers a lot of deals happen and those have to be notarized right so yeah. it gives us more opportunities as opposed to if you live in a slower part of town or and we have a lot of multifamilies as well, so that's a thing. Um, but if you live, I don't know, in more like a residential area, it may be a little bit slower, right? So doing your market researching, market research, excuse me, and understanding that 
maybe as opposed to 80% of my work being loan signings, I may have to go 50 and 50 with loan signings and general notary work or whatever else it is that you decide. And then yeah. lastly is, is finding a mentor. And I know um, that that's a, um, it's hard to find a good mentor. I mean, I'm sure that you can understand this because I, that's why I had to stop my mentorship program and everything because it becomes a lot. Um, so I, my advice with that is when you're looking for a mentor, don't expect people just to give, give, give. Cause you have to understand that if you're reaching out to them, right. It's probably also a hundred other people reaching out to them. So you have to be patient with them, right? Don't go in just expecting them to give you, you know, I don't know the business itself, understanding that you have to go, you have to do your own research, yeah. you have to do, do your due diligence. And then when you do um, reach out to your mentor, try to come to them with a more like a very specific question, right? That's how we know that you're serious and not just, oh, I found this on YouTube. Do you have any advice? Because that's very g generic. I don't know if you've ran a business before. Why are you even starting this business? Exactly. So do your due diligence, right? Provide value to the situation and then come in with your specific questions. And I think that's what will um, cause people to want to mentor you because everybody that I've mentored, even to this day, that's kind of how everything, I know that they were serious and I know that they weren't um, wasting my time. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So will that be something that you consider doing again, maybe in the future? Like if, you know, if you start to balance out the notary and the real estate, would you consider doing that again? Mentoring? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't even know if I'm supposed to do <laughs> But it's actually, it's in the woodworks. I'm actually teaming up with um, two other people. So Tierra Bryant, she does wedding officiating and more so general notary work. And yes. then with Daniel with um, um, Stamper. Oh my God, he's going to kill me. Oh my God, he's gonna kill me. I don't remember the name of his business, but Rafael <laughs> Emerson, he's amazing. He ha he has he's like the king of owning his own signing service. So we're kind of coming together to create a mentoring program so that it can kind of be balanced. You get multiple different perspectives, and you'll get aspects of everything. Gotcha. So in the woodworks, hopefully in the next few months. But me by myself, never again. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too much. It's look, much. look, I, you know, that's, that, that's something I do provide, but I don't advertise it as much. So it's like selective people. Like I've had right. few people that reached out to me in the past couple of months that I've worked with, um, right. new notaries, you know, just to help them go in and, you know, how to set up their business properly. Right. But as far as, you know, having like a 50 something be like, that's not, no. No, that's not my thing. You know, a, a lot of people feel like, you know, maybe, because because I'm into the, the real estate, I'm mainly like wholesaling. You know, okay. I recently just um, got an investment property in North Carolina. That the deal the deal was too good to pass up, so we, we end up keeping it. So okay. so that's gonna be a long term play, and I'm in the process of getting a couple lots. Okay, congratulations. Oh uh, no, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So you know, we you have to you have to diversify yourself in business because you just never know and real estate by far has proven itself over the years absolutely and you cannot you cannot go wrong with investing in real estate and look i tell people even if you can only afford a mobile home right now there's people that's right. flipping mobile homes right and making get, a lot of money yeah. or get land and 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 more importantly so how i was raised is you, we don't have, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? These are things that have been around for years. Yes. It was a blessing spe speaking with Andre Hatchett. To my knowledge, I don't know anybody, especially of our skin complexion, who has been doing it longer than him. I think he has 20 years in the game. He did the same thing. I had the pleasure of interviewing him. He built his notary business and he invested that money in real estate and he is good. So if somebody has already proven exactly what needs to be done, given you the blueprint, why try to do something outside of yourself, make unnecessary mistakes if you don't have to, right? Yeah, we understand the process of um, getting the loan funded or whatever the case may be. We're, we're in the right rooms at, to be able to ask the right questions, just like how we would if, if somebody needed a mentor. So why not just follow what everybody else is doing? No, you're, you're I absolutely think. right. And I, I feel like it's just a matter of people not wanting to work together. Everybody's trying to everybody's chasing the dream but at the same yeah. time they, they they fail to realize that look you need help like yeah. you cannot do that you cannot do this on your own like, okay. i've come to realize that that you cannot do this business on your own like okay. maybe the notary just you know unless you're trying to if you want to ex expand to a notary signing services that's different but right. within real estate i've come to realize you cannot do it 
You need a team, especially if you and you and you're doing out of state investing, so that it's ten times more important to have the right people in your corner. Yep, Absolutely. yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So, so I I've been able like to network with people throughout North Carolina. So I right now I have people in different counties. So okay. just in, in case I you know there's a property I need to look at, or if they're not available, what I've been doing, I've been um, calling notaries that's in the area to go out take wow. pictures for me. That's and awesome. Know, that's so, smart. So that's one way I've been doing it. I was like, hey, it's field inspection. Take some pictures, send right. them back to me, and then from there. Because <laughs> I'm scared. I, that's, I will say I am scared of out-of-state investing only because Philly had not has scarred me, but if you know, you know, Philly is block by block. It's not, yeah. oh, this area, no. This is 56th Street. This is 57th Street. It is a <laughs> So you really have to, that's why I say know your area, but that's awesome. I did not know that. I did yeah. not know that. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. They, they, oh, no, thank you. Trust me. I, I, I know how Philly is because I was, I went to Philly a few years ago because my wife grew up there. So okay. she's from Philly. Okay. So when, when I got there, I was like, damn, I thought, I thought Florida was, <laughs> it was crazy. No, no. <laughs> Philadelphia is a whole different world, a whole, and I'm not from here, but I know it like the back of my hand. But it's a whole different world. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, so where do you see yourself? Maybe let's say, let's say three to five years. Like right now, you you are, like you are doing it absolutely amazing. Everything Thank you. you educating yourself, you investing in people, you are building your network pretty much. So, where do you see yourself in three to five years? Right. So I want to, um. I won't be uh, a long signing agent in three to five years. I'm going to tell y'all that right now because it's ghetto. But you do what you got to do, right? You do what you got to do. But I really just want to, I want to get back to like mentoring and just being around kids, right? But that stuff, unfortunately, doesn't give you the ideal lifestyle that you may want. So that's why I'm going to continue to build my real estate portfolio. I'm on a five-year plan um, so that I have enough passive income for all of my bills and some so that I can keep investing in the stock market, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just want to get I want to get back to just mentoring, giving back to kids. Because essentially, like, I wanted to be a pediatrician. I've all, I play basketball. Like, I love kids. It's the youth, the youth, the youth. So that's the goal. That's the goal right now. That is amazing. And I and I love the fact that you have a plan because a lot of people come into this business, they don't have a plan. Have a plan. And you know, it's extremely important for you guys to have a plan. Look, look, just take some time this weekend. <laughs> just write down your goals. Even like you don't have to do it for the next five years. Just write down your goal for the next six months. Right. You know, and then and then find ways that you can better right. yourself. And you know, right. because you no, know, I'm a firm believer, like anything that you are capable of it, achieving anything, especially you know, whatever Absolutely. you, uh, whatever you desire can be manifested, yes. but you have to be willing to put yeah. in the work. And, and that goes on all aspects of your life. I'm not just talking financially because that's another reason why I had to stop my mentoring program. I didn't even have time to work out anymore. I was barely eating and I was eating junk food. And I'm like, I'm not going to sacrifice myself, you know what I'm saying, for everything else that's going on. So I think that's great. I think you guys should write out your goals for six months um, and then more and also have a five year plan because and understanding financial literacy. I know that's something we did not talk about, but I need you all to understand you need to go ahead and tell yourself mentally how you are going to allocate your funds. Every single time you touch money, you need to know exactly what percentage is going to be allocated to wherever. Because the last thing you want to do is look up a year later, you've made $100,000 and you don't have anything to show for it. And you basically have to go get that $100,000 again. Yes. Okay. Financial literacy is very important. It's too many free resources. Books are under $20. There's no reason why nobody shouldn't be focusing on that as well, right? You're putting in, we're printing documents. We're driving here. We're having to deal with different personalities. We're doing so much. So you don't want that all to go to waste. Nah, nah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, I know, I know a few people within the nail industry that make so much money during the, the pandemic. And right now, <laughs> huh? It's gone. It's gone. Between between notary, e e even as a real estate investor, because I know if you go that was wholesaling, like like getting a lot. When I say bringing in thirty to forty thousand a month, now it's like that's sickening. One, one of them's Let working. Let me hush. One of them. <laughs> and one of them is working full time again. And I don't have any problem with 
um, going back to working or doing what you have to do to get to where you got to go because life yeah. happens, things happen. Exactly. But like I said, if you're listening to me, please, please, please understand the concept of emergency funds and financial literacy because that's crazy. There's yeah. no way I would ever be making that much money and blow it like, well, if I didn't know, but that's crazy. Yeah. I would be pissed. Man, look. I was pissed for them, and it wasn't even my money. <laughs> and I didn't even make. I I never seen those type of months. For those who and for those who saw that type of money, God bless you. Oh man! Because I caught on a little bit late, like in twenty end of twenty nineteen. Got you, got you. Yeah, no, it's like like it's it's very it's very wow. unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Like you know, I, I still talk to them. You know, try to encourage them to get back in the game and everything like that. But I think you know certain lesson have to be learned. Yes. In order for you to progress. Yes. And I feel like, you know, yes. he had to go through that process yes. because he was just starting. That was his first year in real estate wholesaling and he was just killing it. Wow. Well, well listen, um, I think who did Bezos, Bezos, goes, it's, it's, it's billionaires who have been bank Elon Musk, I'm sure. Like, you know, so it's learning lessons. And the thing is, you can always it's a business right? you correlate this, the same lessons um to your next business like i've wasted money on courses i bought a twenty five hundred dollar course wasting my money wasting my time it is what it is so it's just all learning lessons but absolutely. you take it you learn from it and you don't make that mistake again absolutely not you're absolutely right about that <laughs> oh man yeah that was tough you know, it's okay he's gonna bounce back because if you did it once you can do it again Absolutely, absolutely. So I I always ask my guests, and I know since you are extremely heavy on educating yourself, do you have any book recommendation? What would you recommend? Like maybe one or two books that that you've read that you recommend to people. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple because I love to read. Same um, here. <laughs> so rich of uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, I feel like is the is a great starter book, right? It's it's little, you know, story time, story time, but. Chapter four is the most important. It's, it's good stories. It's valuable life lessons. Once you get through that, you need to read the, um, I don't know if it's the next one, but cash flow quadrant, that's a game changer. It's just like yeah. the level up version to really kind of break down exactly what you should be doing. Um, for the for entrepreneurs, because we're all entrepreneurs, the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster by, um, I'm blanking, jo not Joel Osteen, Jesus. I can't. Think it. But it's called the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. It's a red cover. It's really good. Um, Millionaire by Thirty is good. And then I'm gonna stop there. Those are like my top three. Those are my favorite three. Oh, but I love a good book. You learn something yeah. every time. Yeah, no books. Yeah, books is it's by the the Entrepreneur Roller Coaster is by Darren Hardy. Darren if Hardy. Looking, if anybody's looking to get on that, yeah. So I love books. I I do my absolute best to constantly be reading. I'm not reading as much as I was last year. Last year I was getting two to three books a month. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it this year. I'm not even gonna lie, you know, because it. Cause, Try. It, do you read? Do you physic? Do you read? Yes, I have to have a copy. Like I can't. Oh, so I used book. to be like that. I recommend audiobooks. I was like, no, I need the hardback. I want to challenge my brain. Audio, because we're in the car all the time, and sometimes yeah. podcasts can get annoying, especially now it's commercialized. Everybody's doing it; it's not the same. So, audiobooks is definitely worth the money. Yep, oh, million dollars. <laughs> That's right. Great book, great book. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm definitely gonna you know try to get more into the audiobook side. But look, I for some reason I like highlighting, writing down. Oh and yeah, taking notes. notes and stuff like that. So that is you know that's extremely important. And you know, I, I'm all like I said, I'm big into investing. I think we I invested in a course for like rehab. Um, so because I want to start rehabbing at some point. So maybe the property that we just got now in North Carolina, maybe that will be the first one. But at the same time, you know, as like my my plan is, I'm just gonna buy them. Just even if I don't rehab them right away, right. just pay the tax. The tax is all cheap down there. They are, <laughs> they are. So extremely cheap. So if I can, I don't care if I end up with 10 vacant homes, I'll just keep them and just work on them as I go along. Because Absolutely. at the end of the day, you know, we can always rehab and rent them out and refinance and take the money out and, you know, just invest it into something else. Absolutely. Bird method. Absolutely. So, 
So that is, you know, that is amazing. Look, it's been amazing. I really, really appreciate you coming on tonight. I know it's Friday. Everybody has something to do. Yes. I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to, um, just to let you know that we see what you are doing and you're providing a great service. And as a black owned business, um, you know, any way that I can support and, you know, recommend you, like, I know, I know you and a couple other people in Philly. So, Anytime, if I, anybody need a notary or anybody in Philly, I'll definitely recommend you guys just keep doing what you're doing. Keep educating yourself. You're setting a great role model, you know, for the young girls to come. And, you know, just like you have a passion for the kids. And I think that is extremely important. You know, I'm extremely proud of you. Like, Black-owned business is amazing. So just keep doing what you're doing. And we are rooting for you. you yes, know, that's absolutely. What I have to say. They, listen, thank you for having me. <laughs> Um, are you, do you do your notary business full time as well? Uh, no, I I don't. People be thinking I do because okay. you know, <laughs> but oh, I don't blame you. I can't wait till I'm not full time. Oh, oh man, thinking. like I I I, oh. I don't. I was actually I tried it full time for a few months. But, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Mentally. Yeah, it is. Emotionally, yes. Yeah, like, it is. We're doing. Where are you from? That's my last question. Um, I was born in Haiti. And you're I, yeah. Oh, you're from Florida. Got it. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you know, so Got I it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, really. I, you know, I really appreciate it. If you ever need anything in Massachusetts or anything Absolutely. like that, or if you um, find, you know, a property in North Carolina, you need somebody to go out there or anybody that's from that area, just let me know. If I know somebody, I'll, I'll definitely refer them to you. I sure will. I sure will. Thanks for your time, y'all time. I hope y'all have a great Friday. All right. You too. Be safe out there. I sure will. Bye, y'all.